Hello! I wasn't looking at the other screen. I'm also not looking at it. Oh, wow, my volume's very high. <clears throat> I think all my settings got bjorked. Um, oh, we're here. We're Subpixel. I'm Will. Uh, today we're going to be playing uh, a game I used to play a lot as a kid and that I played for the last month. Um, joining me today is the one, the only, Ian Gazan. Ian, are you there? Hello, this is Mr. Gazan. Who's calling? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Gazan. I would your your daughter uh, is a lovely person, and I would like to take her out on a date. I'm sorry, she's already taken. Dang it. Uh, anyways, like uh, I'm what? Like the movie. Oh, like she's the movie. Been taken. She's been taken. Oh my gosh, this had a serious turn of events. <laughs> um anyways today uh let me i'm very bad at this let me just go over to here let me hit transition now i'm in the tiny little corner we're playing wow classic everybody if you didn't already know that oh wow um i the, it was only a five minute wait to get into this server i somehow i so i made three characters before uh the game came out you were like allowed to to like reserve names, which for me it doesn't really matter. So I made three characters, and I happened to make three characters on the busiest server. It was the only one that was full. Oh, man, this is. Have you been having trouble getting into the game? Uh, this is the first time I played it. Um, oh, so I... you're level one. Yeah, I was thinking of switching over to actual WoW just to show my stuff. Um. So I've been playing normal World of Warcraft, which hey, is... Hey, real quick, are, are, you, are you sending game audio through OBS? Because I'm not getting it on my end. Oh. I am sending it now. Are you getting any now? Or you should be getting it through I, Parsec. I can get it through Parsec. I just want to make sure that at least the stream is getting it. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I've been playing a lot of regular World of Warcraft, and that suits me just fine because A, it looks good. B, it's modernized. C. Does it look good though? Does it look good? Modern WoW actually looks really good for what I it is. Don't... Like mm. it, everything's mm. upscaled textures. Like it's not like Yeah, it is it is upscaled textures, but I still feel like the lighting animation No, yeah, as far as that good. stuff, it's old, but or it's not old, it's it's still up res, mm -hmm. but it it looks good for its style. Yeah. Um and 4, did I skip 3? Anyways, 5 um I'm playing from the beginning, so I, I, I have nostalgia for old WoW, but I, new WoW's fine with me. I'm not on Battle of Azeroth and pissed off at it, so I'm not, like, wanting to go play this, necessarily. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. Gotcha. So, uh, we're here at World of Warcraft. I've never played a human or a paladin. Uh, actually, I think, maybe I played a paladin once. I think I played a human last year when I played... Uh, uh, Nilla WoW? Well, I, actually, it's not Nilla WoW. What would you call a normal WoW now? Modern WoW? Uh, What's it yeah. called? It's just World of Warcraft, because this is classic. No, wait. I just came up with a good one. If there's WoW Classic, then the current one is WoW, wow. Now. WoW Now. You hear that, everybody? Yeah, so, it is WoW Now. So I played WoW Now for up to level 20 last year. Um, And I think it was a human. I think that was the first time I did human oh. stuff. Oh. Oh. I do I like that going. toolbar, though. I think it's, it's a nice toolbar. Like, yeah, it's good. I can... It's a little bit cut off on my screen. So, the way I had to do this... For some reason, full screen of this game does not work. So, I had to do... This is windowed. Uh, and I cropped it. I honestly don't know why full screen... It was, like, refreshing... Like, it would steal the frame that was on the screen when i first put it in and then it would keep mm -hmm. my mouse movement but that's it oh yeah that's well i wonder i wonder how classic this actually is because it, it's it's probably not the original client would be my guess i don't think so i'm like that would be a really bad way to do see, it is the I original played, client this is this era of wow is when i first started playing and mm -hmm. i played off and on how like for you? years so nothing really stands out to me as like oh that's what it was like so let me look let me uh let me play the uh, co-host here and let's see what the wow classic differences are see you around 
Uh, I'm just trying to find a nice source here. WoW is good, though. It's I, I have yet to find an MMO I like more than WoW. Okay, here we go. This is MMO Ga. Top 10 differences between WoW Classic and the original. Um, the first one is the add-ons. The add-on system introduces some limits since there were fewer restrictions in vanilla. Uh, now add-on systems exist in WoW Classic, and these authors have become much better over time and have nearly 15 years of practice. So basically, you can have more add-ons in Classic than you can in current WoW. That's the way I'm reading it. Because they don't have the restrictions. There are plenty of bugs, glitches, exploits, and hardware limitations. Yeah, um, it's very, like, compression-y, chunky. Yeah. Let's go kill a wolf. Wow, this article just ends at number five, even though it said in the top ten. Oh, but it's a part one. Anyway, it's not a good article. It's very rare. Like, I play a wizard. It's weird to be, like, hitting things. Oh, like, actually getting up on them. Yeah, it's, like, strange. So I do I do remember playing WoW back in... Oh, boy, this must have been, like, 2006, 2007. I think I played... I think I bought one month sub. I played it for a little bit. I didn't really like MMO combat back then. I'm still not crazy about it, but I hated it. And then I remember paying for 10 bucks worth of gold from a Chinese gold farm and nice. just buying a lot of stuff. So I was like a level 10 gnome. I didn't understand MMOs at all in terms of like what your class is and what you should be aiming towards. Yeah. So I was just not doing well at the game, bought the best armor I could wear at the time and then didn't do my sub past a month. Just wasn't enjoying it. Yeah, <laughs> I am. Um, I don't know. I, I like there's a special it's for me world of warcraft's the ultimate like i'm bored and i want to watch something on my other monitor yeah and or listen to a podcast or i don't know it's just very yeah very fun. let me tell you about uh slay the spire which is my current podcast game really good really really good it's great to just pick it up and play for 30 minutes and, and do a run and then just save midway through the run or fail the run and then just keep going. But I, I definitely hear you on that. Yeah, so, uh, that's that's the most I like about WoW. The most I like about WoW? I don't know if I phrased that right. The most I like about WoW. Oh man, we should just play some Asheron's Call. The game is oh, good. Oh boy. Yeah, I think the problem is I want an MMO style game but I don't want MMO mechanics. You know what gotcha. I mean? Yeah. In terms of like the actual movement and combat. I do like the the cycle though. I, I did play a lot of Elder Scrolls Online for work because I was a QA tester on it. Oh, no. And I oh, got, right. I really I thinking, enjoyed the Sorry, uh, I was thinking your cycle. current job. And I was like, what? Oh, no, no. <laughs> but I really enjoyed like building the cycle and then executing on it. The cycle in terms of like, I've got a spell that, that, procs every second i've got this spell that procs every three seconds i gotta proc this spell before that spell because it buffs it and you like get used to like during combat you're doing like one five three one five three one five three health four 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 one five three you know what i mean mm -hmm. love that I, I that was actually the thing about mmos that surprised me the most that i really enjoyed was building that but it just feels like you gotta get to you gotta go through so much to get there you know yeah I um I never played Elder Scrolls online. I It's um it's okay. I had a friend in college Let and like I was like, "Oh, we should try Elder Scrolls online." What I Oh, I must choose a reward. I think it's free now on Game Pass. Yeah, so I was like, "Oh, I want to uh, Oh, I'll play it." Or like, I think we had decided when it comes out we'd play it. So like fast forward like a couple months and it comes out and they were like, oh, we're going to all play WoW, or WoW Classic, uh, Elder Scrolls Online. I was like, oh, sweet, I'll join. And they were like, well, it's kind of just for us. And I was like... <laughs> Wait, what? What do you mean? Like, like, as in they didn't want me to join. Oh, my God. And I was like, okay. Wow. Like, That's pretty bonkers. 
and so I just never ended up playing it, and I since had left college and didn't talk to that person anymore. I was like, I think you I've never wanted to play it. it. <laughs> it's pretty similar. I think I would too. To WoW in terms of it's like a serious fantasy world. They actually uh, some of the early footage of it was, and this isn't an insider secret. This was the first trailer for it. It actually looked a lot like a WoW clone. Like it was, the main view was third person. And it was a lot of um, cartoony effects and cartoony animation and exaggerated uh, art style. And they ended up going back and scrapping all of that. Really? And basically removing... I, they they joke that they were removing all the fun from the game. But the, the truth is it looked exactly like a WoW clone. Um, so they, they, drew, they drew it back. They changed the art style and the aesthetics to make it more in line with, uh, you know, Skyrim or uh, Oblivion. Yeah, I really like um, WoW's art style. I don't know what it is about it. I do like that it's cartoony. And it has a really good sense of scale. I, I, but I think it's, here's my problem. So those fence posts you're standing next to, those should be like three feet, three or four feet tall in real life. Right. And instead they're like six feet tall. I, I guess I'm, by sense of scale, I mean the cities are huge. Yes, I do like, like that. The areas just, are huge. Yeah, I, I like how big it is. I just was never crazy about how um, it feels like you're three-quarter scale. Or okay. half scale. I see, uh, see these people over here talking about Hogger. Yeah. That's the guy that people are waiting in lines to kill. Oh, yeah, yeah. By the way, you're definitely going the wrong direction. Oh, I know I am. Uh, well, actually, Ian, these aren't uh, quest markers. They are uh, showing me where the towns are. No, I know that. It's just I remember this quest line from when I played last year. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, I just want to yeah. check out uh, Stormwind. Yeah, Stormwind's good. I, I really did like the city. Yeah. Yeah, on regular WoW, I think I just hit like 35. Might be 40. I don't think I'm 40. But uh, yeah, it's fun. If, I feel like if I had a group of friends who were playing it, that would either... I, I actually can't decide. That would either make it better or worse. I don't actually know. I feel like a the way I play it now, well. it's only when yeah. I'm bored I play it. But if I had a group of friends, like the way I used to play Destiny, which I'll probably get back into with Shadowkeep, but I would just like, oh, okay, not, oh, tonight I'll play Destiny, but it's like, oh, tonight I'm playing Destiny with blah, 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 blah. Like, you gotta make sure yeah, I play exactly. that. Yeah, exactly. It can't really be a background game when you're playing with a group. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, There's a lot of people on. I mean, yeah. this is pretty popular. It is. Uh, it was the top streamed game on Twitch for a bit. Let's look it up. Let's see what's. Uh, see where Let's we're see at. See where we're at. <clears throat> How are? Do I have anything Oops. in my bank? Nope. Have a good one. Um. Over the last seven days, it is the most watched. But let me look up current. There's 1.1 million people watching Twitch right now. That's wow. bonkers. That's a lot of people. And there's currently 327,000 people watching World of Warcraft right now. Doesn't say classic or normal, but yeah, it's not separated on on Twitch. But it is separated mm -hmm. on Mixer. Because yeah, I was so there's, I was tagging there's, this video. Yeah, so there's 327,000 people watching World of Warcraft. Second place is all other games combined, 325. Jeez. And then there's and then it rounds out the rest of like the top ten. It's like CSGO, League of Legends, Fortnite, etc. But basically it's it's almost triple the next highest game, which is CSGO. Where is this lady? So yeah, we're gonna get to sixty on this stream. First to sixty. I think somebody uh, already hit sixty, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they did. they did. They beat out like, I I think the analogy I used in my brain was, it's like Walmart was trying to get it, but like the mom and pop shop got it right before Walmart could. Oh, okay. Analogy that makes almost no sense, but got it. Well, it, it's it. like a giant conglomerate guild full oh, of like. Oh no! Wait, I get it. It's Ready Player One. Exactly. 
God, actually, Karen's, see that? Karen's reading it right now. It's 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 a god awful book. I think the, and the movies the movies barely like, better because it's I, a movie. I didn't see the book. I think have you read his second book? No, God no. I barely got through Ready Player One. So I like Ready Player One in the context of what it is. Like You're, I just thought it was a fun. Oh, I'm so like, close to cursing right now. Fun book. No, I'm not saying it's some it's literary not, amazing thing. I just, I'm not meant to be mean, but man. That was not a fun book because it has like two, so like you, you're reading it and then there's four paragraphs of him explaining what Ultraman is. Right. And it's like, we, I don't need this at all, period. This should not be in the book. I'm really surprised that made it through the editor. Right. Just, but in that oh. book, uh, I always say this to me, in that book, it made sense. Not made sense, but there, it was a world that was built to live off of nostalgia. So anytime yes. something nostalgia came up, people would explain what it is the same way someone would explain like if a history topic came up it's because that's all society was and so when i read the book i like accepted that like some of that was annoying but it was like oh it's part of this world again it's not yeah, but a I perfect think, book or anything but but i, I think part I, of that is like like i have the same problem when i'm watching movies where i i have some small experience writing and writing screenplays and writing short stories and stuff and i don't see it as oh this makes sense it's kind of like there was a decision here where the author could have presented it this way or they could have presented it a different way. Kind of like the scene in, um, oh shoot, what's the the Last Jedi? That's the latest Star Wars movie, right? Yeah. Where Skywalker, Luke Skywalker, is just drinking uh, alien teat milk. And it's like, why is that in the movie? That's like, a great yeah, scene. sure. He's on an island. He has to drink. He has to eat. He's probably doing his chores. It makes sense in the world but why show it does that kind of make sense it's like i'm not viewing it in terms of does it make sense does it fit within the story it's like as the author why would you choose to include that particular yeah. detail i i I, like, I do like that Whoa. scene though in uh in star wars so. are you serious made sense to me gotta drink milk <laughs> let's hey we're all over the place today did you like last jedi uh i've seen it once and i enjoyed it very much about it are you serious yeah it was a good movie no it was a it was a bad movie no i enjoyed it it was so bad i don't know i can't tell if you're jo okay well 100 i need you to tell me whether or not you're joking right now i've seen it once i enjoyed watching the movie okay. and that is it hey we should watch it again this weekend i haven't seen it since it came out but i remember not liking it no i i enjoyed it i thought it was cool Action scenes were cool. Oh, Lightsaber Did stuff. you like uh, Force Awakens? Eh, not really. To an extent. Yes. See, Force Awakens, I can I can understand why people like it. It's kind of like J.J. Uh, Abrams is one of those directors that I don't like, but I'm not sure why I don't like him. Right. Um, and so that makes me less certain. It, 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 it makes me... I don't feel like I can say his movies are bad because I can't describe why they are bad. Right. But I don't like them. You know, whereas something like Last Jedi can be like, oh, it's bad because X, Y, Z, A, B, C, etc. You know? So, yeah. Star Wars isn't a bad place. Oh, I thought that said Mango Wolf. <laughs> Mango. Oh, these are hard ones. The... I shouldn't be here. Hey, you can um... die, boy. Yeah, I I just I I enjoyed the movie. I liked watching it. Um, I just I find it annoying that people like uh, Ryan Johnson did a lot of interesting stuff with the Star Wars canon, did and I know? I hate people who are like can't believe he took it and just did this and this and this with it, and like no they're gonna set it back on track and all stuff. I was like, it's not like they gave it to Ryan. Uh, ryan johnson and we're like oh here's the keys to star wars you make a movie i guess we'll deal with the aftermath like kathleen kennedy and everyone else was there every step of the way and it was only after that movie came out and people didn't like it that they were like well we'll we'll set star wars back on course we're gonna get jj <laughs> abrams back yeah, yeah. In. like all that stuff yeah like, like as as if he destroyed their fandom and like 
everyone no one else is to blame like people act yeah. that way and i'm like if you don't think there's a committee deciding every single thing about star wars exactly i agree i agree it's definitely the fault of the committee and not a single person yeah um yeah that movie i feel like i need to rewatch it it's just yeah see i feel like if i rewatch it i'll be like oh man this movie's not good at all but i have a but really the... good memory of just enjoying watching it um i, I there were I, the other thing i think was that i went into it not expecting it to be that good mostly because i did not like force awakens so i was like yeah. already checked out on the i also think play. doing these three movies was an uphill battle that nobody wanted to admit before I they came I don't out think so i don't think so because i think like he like jj abrams built force awakens like it was a paint by numbers star wars film right and that but that but what i'm saying is that doesn't feel like a like an uphill battle at all it felt like they were just like oh it's star wars how hard can it be you do xyz and you're no. done and then he did that and it didn't come out that good that, that's what i mean well, I, well, I think a lot of people loved it but i think they thought this is going to be, be easy easy and it was I, I didn't mean an uphill battle i meant an uphill battle looking back yes like oh that didn't work like because name one really good sequel to a classic movie uh episode one of phantom menace yeah to an extent you know what that is a good movie i, stand I hate by that. attack of the clones oh yeah well one's so list. attack of the clones i think is is like a middleman between episode one and episode three not just chronologically but in terms of like it has its good stuff but it's also got some bad stuff in it and then episode three i fall asleep every time i watch that movie episode three has uh, really good action scenes and that's about it. it it does but i still prefer the action at the end of episode two oh, like that yeah. build up and then it pops off is so good um but yeah no I, a, I agree a good you're trying modern, to think of like a, a modern take on it i i this is another movie i have seen i went into with zero expectations or actually i went into with very negative expectations and i've only seen it once but the all-female ghostbusters yeah it's a bad movie I, I but i just remember enjoying it I, I don't remember being like this is a good movie like it was obviously not a very good movie but it, i wasn't I didn't go into it, or I didn't come out of it thinking, like, they ruined Ghostbusters. No, it'll never be, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, um... So, two things. Um, I have an example of a movie that was good. That was, like, a reboot slash sequel. Mm -hmm. Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Very oh, good movie. you're... Tr Very good movie. Uh, Is that in the criteria of where... Other than the first movie, the other ones are very hokey. Good day to you. Yeah, yeah, the original ones, yes. Yes. Because I think they got they got weirder and weirder. But the the new series, I haven't seen the latest one, the third one in the new series, but it's the first two were very, very good. Very like surprisingly good. Um oh, whoops. also uh Shin Godzilla, one of the greatest movies of the last 10, 20 years. Oh, I haven't incredible. seen it. Um the second thing is, Will, I feel like, and I'm I'm being completely genuine here, I think I'm starting to realize that maybe you have bad taste in movies. Me? Yeah. I, see, I set apart need movies I enjoy. Like, when I say I enjoy a movie, I do not mean it's a good movie. Oh, okay. I just yeah. mean I enjoy watching it. Yes, yes. Like I enjoy. I think for me, I tie those. I don't tie them one to one, but I tie them a little bit closer no. in terms of I'm like, if I did enjoy a movie, that means it has some worth. On right. It. I I can also say a movie is good without liking it. Yes. But yes, that's true. Yeah. When I use the word enjoy, it could it off like most like nine out of ten times. I also mean it's a good movie. But like I like recently I rewatched the Get Smart movie. That is not a mm -hmm. good movie, but I enjoy that movie. Same with yeah. like the room. I enjoy watching the room because it is so horrible. Oh, yeah, yeah. But and you know, speaking of enjoy, even though it's kind of a bad movie, the World of Warcraft movie, I enjoyed oh, it. See, I haven't seen even it. Even though it, it had plenty of bad parts in it, but it had some really good stuff in it and it had great storytelling. Yeah. Um. 
what did you think of, uh, see, I think the other piece of evidence I have is for you having bad taste in movies is you're a Christopher Nolan fanboy, aren't you? Not a fanboy. Um, in the sense that like, I can't wait for his next movie or something. I just, again, I enjoy watching his films. Okay. Uh, so let me, let me, let me run through this then. Okay. So here's the litmus test. Um, okay. Uh, the dark Knight. How'd you feel about that one? I like dark Knight. Okay. Okay. The dark Knight rises. I, I thought the ending was trash. But what about the rest of it? And the plot is pretty trash. Yeah. Okay. But I like uh, Batman. Okay. Just I wouldn't say Dark Knight Rises is a good movie. It is not a okay, good, good movie. So quick check in your two, your two for two right now. Okay. Uh, Inception. I... I like Inception, and I think it's a, a pretty good movie. Will, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's the wrong answer. See, the correct answer is that Inception is one of the worst Hollywood movies ever made. Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. I got that wrong. <laughs> do you want to talk about Inception for a little bit? We can talk about Inception. Do you, do, I, wait, did you like Dunkirk? Uh, I actually, I was okay with Dunkirk. I, yeah, I think too. it was good. I just wasn't crazy about it. There's people who were crazy about it, and I'm like... I liked it. It had good and bad. Yeah. I thought it was a beautiful movie, and I thought the lack of plot was cool. Yes, and especially how they structured it, where there's yeah. three intertwining stories on separate timelines or time scales. Um, I thought that was great. But, like, the whole kid on the beach part, I was just like, eh, this isn't that interesting, you know? Yeah. Um, it was like okay. seeing HD... Yeah. Uh, like war films or something. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, before we talk about Inception, Interstellar. Uh, I I just recently rewatched it. Um, yeah. I enjoy that movie. I'm not... <laughs> and it has very good set pieces and everything. And it's a well shot yeah. movie. But I don't think... Yes. The... I, I'm a sucker for sci-fi films, so I, like I really like it because it's like cool spaceships and going to cool planets and stuff. But like the fact that love conquers all, you're so close lame. to the right answer. You're so close to the right answer. What? That I it's just, a bad movie. There it is. Thank you, Will. <laughs> uh, but see, so, okay, I, 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 I will admit I'm color I'm colored a little bit because. The screenplay, the first draft screenplay for Inception leaked like two years before it came out and I read it and I couldn't stop laughing at how bad the screenplay was. And when the movie came out, it was about 75% of it was still in there. The Matt Damon part was not in the screenplay and they cut. There's an opening scene in the screenplay where it's um, it's this is the opening part of the screenplay. I'm not making this up. It's like uh, JPL Laboratories 2008. And they're like. Sir, the probe is approaching the anomaly. And he's like, okay, report the findings. And they go, sir, it doesn't make any sense. That must mean, oh my God, there's a wormhole near Saturn or wherever it is. And they're <laughs> like, we can't tell anybody. This has to be classified. If anybody finds out, it'll start a war. And then it cuts to 20 years later after World War Three is the title card. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I and then and then they go into the war and they go into the aftermath of the war, which is in the movie. But in the screenplay, they never explicit. They basically make it kind of clear that the war happened, even though it had nothing to do with the wormhole. Even though they had that yeah. whole scene saying the war was going to happen, so they just cut that inexplicable scene at the beginning. But they left it in the movie. So in the movie, it's not that bad. But in my mind, when I'm watching it, I'm going, right. "Wait, they didn't they didn't fully clean up the error. They just half cleaned it up." Yeah, I. Knowing that is very funny to me because I like the concept of like there's a a pla or not a plague what is it a f uh, what kills plants oh a uh, plague well yeah it's like a, a, a yeah whatever it's like slowly killing every type of plant and so they're like yes. left with corn and that NASA isn't around on the outside but 
Oh god! It was so, so they have stupid. to be hidden because the government yeah. is still funding them. <laughs> but but people hate scientists now. So right, that was the part I was scene. like. There's that scene where he's like, she could be a great engineer, and he goes, the world doesn't need engineers. They don't need doctors. They need the world needs farmers. And he goes something like, well, maybe if the doctors were around, then my wife wouldn't have died from cancer. And it's like such a stupid line. And then the scene where he's hacks a drone with an IBM laptop and then just flies it around with the nub, the little nub in the center of like the ThinkPad. Yeah, it's pretty it's, good. It's, it's, and so like that was the problem was you're exactly right. Like it was beautifully shot and directed, but the underlying material just kept going to such stupid yeah. lengths. Like, okay, I'm trying to remember. I'm pretty sure this is accurate because it was in the screenplay and I think it was also in the movie. The spaceship is that takes off is in the center of the NASA facility, right? Yeah. But That's it's so stupid. It's not real. What do you mean it's not real? It's not a real spaceship. It turns out to be fake. What? So Michael Caine's character is building the spaceship as the entire facility so that when whatever the big calamity happens they discover the planet they can take that off and get it there but it's not actually he's not actually building it it's just oh, a yeah. fake plan yeah no but my point is when they take off in the spaceship to go to the black hole uh, hi chai six hi zach uh we'll play jackbox soon i think not tonight but Sometimes soon we'll play some more Jackbox. Um, when he takes off in the spaceship, doesn't it take off from the center of the office structure? I just remember this scene where the, they start spinning and the office structure around them is spinning as well. And no, they no, no, like no. literally take off from the center of the interstellar, like NASA complex. Like the underground the, complex. The rocket the rocket takes off somewhere in the facility, but it's not in the center of it. I thought yeah, I mean, I, that's why I may be mistaken. I don't that. think so. Because it's definitely part of the screenplay, and I thought I saw a little bit of it. But anyways, it was just things like that, and then the whole Matt Damon plot that just did not need to be in there at all. Yeah. Just such a... Oh, boy. It just felt like somebody... I, it's almost like more fantasy sci-fi than hard sci-fi because of how many just plot holes and logic leaps there are in it. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, what was the uh, Inception? We talk about Inception. Uh, no, we didn't talk about Inception. Okay, how do you feel about Inception? I like Inception. I enjoy. Well, that I'm movie. sorry, that's the wrong answer. I love in this world that you, you're not wrong. <laughs> no, no. See, if I'm going off, I'm going off. That's I true. ain't stepping down from my Okay, wait, wait. Zach, I, I oh, Zach, I'm so sorry. Uh, but quote, Inception is the greatest, unquote. That's the wrong answer. I don't want to talk about Inception. What, Ian, what is your favorite movie? My favorite movie? Yeah. Oh, man. Okay, I don't think I have a favorite movie, but I'll talk about some of my favorites. Um, Starship Troopers. Have you seen Starship Troopers? Uh, I've seen bits and pieces of it. You, you got to watch it. It's, it's it's an incredible movie it's like you probably just think it's like some dumb sci-fi action movie no no no, no. i know it's an incredible it's, movie yeah it's oh god but it's like you have to watch it wholly and completely because it takes you it's one of those brilliant movies where it knows it's it's aware the entire time what the audience is thinking and feeling mm -hmm. and plays into that but not in the sense of like we want the audience to feel sad so we play a sad song for them it's like it's hard to describe but it's just by the end of the movie you start to feel complicit and the people that you've been cheering on the whole time and that are still presented as quote unquote heroes in the movie you start to realize hey maybe these are the bad guys after all and it's it's just so good it's such a good movie um uh, another movie I really like is Playtime. Have you heard of that? It's a 60s French uh, avant-garde movie. Actually, I don't, even, I don't think it's avant-garde. Just a 60s modernist movie. Mm -hmm. um, it's really good. It's basically this guy who goes to, to Paris 
in the 60s and in, in 60s paris was underpinned a lot of like modernist architecture like a renaissance of modernist architecture so this guy comes from the countryside he's like 40 years old he's trying to meet a, a buddy of his from the war and he's just wandering around the city and so at the start like he comes in it's either the airport or the train station and he just gets lost because it's like almost brutalist modernist architecture where it's like concrete walls and all these like identical mm. grid hallways and he's just getting lost in it and so like that first part of the movie is him just like struggling to maneuver in this modernist city and then the modernism just like becomes alive because people start to interact with it and like the the humanity of it shines through and then like one of the last shots of the movie is like he's driving there's like a bus going along a road and it's all these modern, it's like sixties buses driving by beautiful sixties apartment buildings. And then like multiple like cranes being risen. And it's just like a beautiful movie about architecture and change. And it's, it's so good. I cried at the end of it. I cried at a movie about French architecture. I know you're such it's a just, baby. It's really good. Um, so those are two really good. Movies. I'm trying to think of some other ones I really like. Um, do you do you not want to talk about Inception? No, I don't care. I just wanted to know what movies you actually like. Yeah, I'm I'm very much a movie snob. Um, I can tell. So here's the problem I have with Inception, and I think what's great about Inception is that all of its flaws are revealed in like the first five minutes, and then it just does that over and over again for the whole movie. Um, so I went into the movie very excited because Inception was right after Dark Knight, right? Does that sound yeah. right? So I really enjoyed Dark Knight. That was the first time I like watched a Nolan movie and I was like, well, this guy's really good. And I remember being very excited to watch Inception, but I was on a trip, so I couldn't watch it with my friends. So I got back into town and like the next morning, I immediately went to the movie theater by myself and watched Inception. And within like five minutes, I was like, oh no, something's wrong. <laughs> Okay, so here's here's what happens in the first five minutes. But actually, how about you describe the first five minutes of Inception? Um, if you can remember it. First five minutes of Inception? Yeah. Oh, it's old, uh, old, what's his face? The old guys in the building, right? He's yeah. eating soup? Yeah. Yeah, he's, so he's basically, he's in the building, and if I remember correctly, they come in, and they're trying to kill him, but they can't. Um, yeah, Zach's right, Mombasa. So basically, in the real world, they're in Mombasa, and they're trying to get to him in the dream world, and they start having a fight. Wait, so the movie doesn't start with him, old K Kanaka, Tanaka. Once oh, a, I, once it may start. It, it may start with that as a tease, but it. Oh, okay. But the first like major scene is him young. Like they're going after him in the dream world when he's young. And so there's this scene where they're fighting and he like Leonardo DiCaprio like points a gun at, at Tanaka or whatever. And Tanaka points a gun at him. And the, there's a line where they say something like, oh, oh, you're going to shoot me. Oh, but I'm not afraid of you shooting me because if you shoot me, I'm just going to wake up because this is a dream. And when you shoot me, I'm not actually going to die. I'm just going to wake up. And then he's like, okay. Hey, and then he shoots him and then he wakes up out of a tub and he's like, oh no, he shot me. I woke up from dreaming. And it's like all this dialogue that's happening that does not need to be dialogue that they could have just done that by him, you know, having a gun pointed at his head. Well, do, he do they say, if you shoot me, I'll just wake up. So he shoots the other guy in the leg. Well, yeah, but the point is, you don't need to say that out loud. You can just show it. Like, the whole movie is just Leonardo DiCaprio and other people explaining things out loud, in particular to Ellen Page, whose character solely exists so that they can explain <laughs> things that everybody already knows. That's true. Out loud. And it's like, you what don't need to say all this. Like, 90% of that dialogue could have been cut by just showing things, you know? A little bit. Um, and then the other thing was none of the dreams were exciting or unique. They were just it, like, even when they're in the snow ski, the ski fortress, it's like, who cares? It's a generic snow scene. Who cares? It's a city scene. Even when they did like CGI city folding over, it was like, who cares? You know, yeah. 
none of it was exciting like the dream spaces where moods tones locations change like on a dime and 10 times a minute and things get really weird you know scale perspective location none of that really happened in the movie and it was just like sure you say it's a dreamscape but it looks like just another generic city shootout you know right Ooh. i hear you um and then the last thing was Nolan has like no concept of pacing. So um, I think the Dark Knight is like the best example of this. Still a very good movie, but it feels like a movie and a half where after Two-Face has his after Two-Face is born because he is in the hospital, like everything after that scene feels like it didn't need to be in because the movie was done at that point. Mm hmm. Did you feel the same way? I feel like most people feel like that. I feel like every time I watch, there's certain movies, but especially with The Dark Knight, every time I watch it, I'll get to a point like halfway through the movie and I'll be like, oh wow, this still has to happen and the weird fairies thing still has to happen. Yes. And all yeah, that it... stuff. And I'm like, when does that, I thought that happened. Or, or like, when does that happen? Yeah, he's like, he's terrible at, I, I don't want to call it, plotting because he still kind of has a general rising action and resolution it's more just that he crams so much into the movie mm -hmm. that you lose sense of the pace and it just keeps going and going and going and dark knight is a good example of that because most of the time if like if you're watching it like it's a normal movie it would have ended at the hospital scene where uh harvey dent is in the um the right because it would be a setup like for another movie exactly yeah it would have been perfect um and you should recut dark knight <laughs> I'm so glad Jake's here because if film YouTube disagrees with me, then they don't deserve to be called film YouTube. Um, I'm just on a rant today. I Ian, like I think you're story. someone I want to watch a bunch of foreign films with. Yeah. Um, so the just to, to go back to Inception real quick. So the problem I have with Inception is similar. It's just different because instead of it being like a movie and a half pushed into a single movie, the, the the conclusion to that movie is like 45 minutes long like the entire van jumping mm -hmm. off the bridge that whole like end set piece that that climax is literally like 45 minutes it's so long and i think what happens uh, i was talking to a friend about it and we think what what causes it not just because it's so long but what, what makes it feel so dragged on is that he continues like the same song or the same types of song through multiple scenes continuously mm -hmm. in the background. And so it no longer feels like separate scenes. It feels like a montage. And then because he does that for 30 minutes straight, it feels like a 30 minute climactic montage. And it's just like, what is happening with this movie? Right. You know, I like, uh, sorry, Jake's implication that I've never seen a foreign film. So <laughs> Shin Godzilla would be my first. Well, you did just say you kind of implied it. No, um, actually, I think my favorite foreign film. I really like Stalker. Oh, Stalker's good. I got to rewatch that. That's and a good one. I really like um, the Seventh Seal. I have not seen Seventh Seal. I need to see that. I really like it. Um, I was thinking about another movie I really liked um, is uh, El Topo, the um, Alejandro Jodorowsky. I don't know if Alejandro is his first name, but it's, it's a Yodorovsky movie. Um, and it's about this, it's like French style cowboy. No, I think he's Spanish. I think he's from Spain. And uh, it's kind of like a spaghetti Western, but it's more like a, what would you call a burrito, burrito Western? Well, I need your help here. Uh, so they call them spaghetti. Western. Yeah, because they call them spaghetti Westerns because they're, they're Italian made Westerns. Yeah, or what? Yeah, shot in Italy, or but mostly because it's like Italian director writer. So if it's made by a Spanish, by a Spaniard, Spanish as in Spain or Spanish as in Mexico? Spain, Spain, Spain. I would so like a top say, of Western? yeah, maybe. Uh... <laughs> Jake says HR suggests we stop talking. Um... <laughs> I know, I know. Um, but anyways, it's it's really good. It's also kind of an art movie. There's this fantastic scene where I believe this is after his son has died 
and he's become like he's he's stopped being a like a western outlaw and he's like shattered so he just becomes this like weird priest in a small town and something happens and so he's a priest with his head shaved and in one scene and then he has like an like a an epiphany where he's like no this isn't who i am i need to get back to who i am my grieving is over and then like literally the next shot he's back on his horse he's back with his long hair and beard he's back in the same clothes and he's riding again and it's like this great moment where in any other movie like especially in a, like a american movie the audience would laugh at it and be like oh look it's a continuity error when did he grow his hair how did he get his mm -hmm. horse back so quickly you know but because this is kind of like an art movie you're just like oh, those details don't matter. It's all about his mindset. It's like he has those things because he has now fully consumed that mindset again. And it's like, oh, God, it's so good. It's a good one. Yeah, what about you? What are some... Of... Sorry, somewhere. go ahead. No, you go. I was just going to ask what, what other movies you like that are actually good. What other movies? Um, <laughs> wow. Man, Inception, you know? No, uh... I do need to rewatch Inception, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have the same judgment of it. Um, what other like actually good movies do I like? Um, it's kind of tough, isn't it? I just rewatched Spirited Away yesterday. That movie's really good. Sp Spirited Away is the one that takes place in the ghost hotel, right? Yeah, the bathhouse. Oh yeah, that one's a good. It's one. just That's like. A really good one. It, there's no like fantastical plot other than that, but it's just a girl, like just trying to get back home in, and not yeah. in a heroic way. She's just like, okay, I guess I'll work here and I'll clean, and then I guess I'll do this thing. Like it's it's very, like it's like fish know, out of like, fish out of water. Yeah, it's not like she's in a ghost hotel in the sense that that's scary, but it's like someone just put her in a different city. And she's yeah, like, oh, I like, gotta get back to my parents, and I gotta go home. This guy I yeah. met who was nice to me, like I should help him out. Love it. Um, yeah. Oh shoot, there was another movie I thought of. I like good oh, movies. I I don't mean to redirect away from good movies. Have you ever seen Lethal Weapon? I've never seen Lethal Weapon. Will, I think you should watch Lethal Weapon, and we should talk about it next Tuesday on the stream because I had never seen it either until I watched it the other day, this weekend. Mm -hmm. oh, we need to talk about Lethal Weapon. Oh, uh, speaking of Lethal Weapon, what are your Die Hard opinions? Oh, Die Hard 1 is really good. See, my opinion it's, is Die Hard 1 and 3 are the best. See, I've only seen 1, 4. Yeah, I've only seen 1 and 4. 3 is really good. 3 uh, yeah, is I, the I have... sequel to 1. I have one, two, and three on Blu-ray, and I, I do need to watch two and three. One is just like I, I, I just I'm a sucker, two. I'm a sucker for action movies that are just like really well written, really well set up. You don't have to do anything special. You just have to well, you got to do something a little special, but you have to do everything really well. You know, we should, we should watch Die Hard three this weekend. Ooh, yeah, but I don't have time to watch Die Hard two between now and then. The you don't have to watch Die Hard two. I feel like I do though. Two separate. Three is the sequel to one. Oh, and yes, Jake, Jake is a hundred percent right. Last time I watched oh. it, which is like a year ago, I watched it with Love Karen, it. and we simultaneously were like, "Was that a Donald Trump joke?" And then kind of like uh, Home Alone two, yes, Lost in New York, but way less apparent. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I'm trying to think of um, action movies in particular that I really enjoy. Uh, uh, the Ra the raid was pretty good. So the raid's one a movie I still have to see. Did you like Snowpiercer? Yes, I thought Snowpiercer was pretty good. Me too. Everyone like somehow hates that movie, even though I I have the conceit that having a train that only has one way to walk through everything doesn't make the even the slightest sense. Yeah, but I think it's one of those movies where you you have to accept the conceit in order to even watch the movie in a way. You know? uh, yeah, I agree. That, that was my point. Is like because at one point they go through like that classroom, and I was like, how many people probably walk through this thing every single day? See you later. Yeah, exactly. Like, but I thought I thought sense. it was 
very good, especially the way they were like withholding and then revealing information, kind of like control does where it's like, you know, there's information there. The characters are acting on that information, but you're not, yeah, you're not privy to it. Yeah. Control's so good. Yeah. Control's good. Um, trying to think action movies. I really enjoy. I, do you like the Indiana Jones movies? The yeah, three the first, Indiana Jones the, movies. The first one's fun. The second one, I can see people not really liking that, and I kind of agree. I don't think it's terrible. I think it just is not as charming as it should be. Um, the third one's okay. Yeah, I think I'm one, and three, two. I'm kind of fine with the fourth one, honestly. I, I feel like the third and the fourth one are about the same for me. What can I do for you? Um, there was a movie. You know what? You know what? Honestly, I'm not that crazy about. Because I rewatched it recently and it didn't have quite the same charm to it. Ghostbusters. You know, I watched through Ghostbusters again recently. And I feel I think like some of the pl some of the plot just feels contrived. I feel That's like all. I really like a lot of the scenes. Mm hmm. But I, like watching it together, I don't. I don't know how to explain it. I still no, no, like I Ghostbusters. That. It feels it feels like it's it feels like a movie by flowchart in a way where like each individual scene is pretty good, but putting them all together, it feels like it starts to like leapfrog some stuff towards the end of the movie where it's just like, oh, here's a generic, you know, funny shot. Here's a generic thing. It's it's yeah. hard it's hard to describe, but yeah, it doesn't flow together as well as I would like. I as opposed to. Um, Going back to Star Wars, Star Wars Episode Four: New Hope, fantastic, fantastic, love it. That movie, I rewatched it again a couple years ago, and it was like just incredible. The amount of charisma that comes off naturally from the dialogue in that movie, like you really do believe that this is like a group of like friends who have come together and they're acting so naturally around each other and they're just having a good time in having space. Having a good time. Yeah. Five is um, not good. Five is real boring. Um, six. But the whole Dagobah <gasps> thing. I hate Dagobah so much. <laughs> it's just such a speed bump. Oh, um, I love it. Six. Uh, what's six? Return of the Jedi? Yeah, yeah six. Um, I keep trying to say either Return of the Sith or Revenge of the Jedi. <laughs> it wasn't original. It was originally Revenge of the Jedi. Yeah, I think so. That's why all those um, things were printed that say it. Oh my god, I watched that movie like before Force Awakens came out. I watched all six uh, Star Wars movies up to that point. Return of the Jedi is, oh my god, Luke is the most insufferable character in that film. Have you seen it recently? Uh, it's been a bit. He literally sounds like a 70s cultist because the whole time, the entire movie, he's just like, I'm at one with the force. Everything's going to be OK now. I just need to find my father and talk to him. And then he finally like meets Darth Vader and Darth Vader's like, I'm going to kill you and your friends. And he's like, no, you're not, dad, because I love you and I love the force. And that won't happen under the force. <laughs> Darth Vader's just like, no, really, I'm going to kill you and your friends. I run an empire. We have things to do. We have power to maintain. And Luke, the entire movie is just like, no, because I believe that you love me too much to do that, dad. And you love the force too much. It's it's just so whiny and just like a like a great warped cultist. All of his dialogue is like that. It's wonky. Um. Yeah. So those are action movies, right? Well, not really. Yeah, sort of. Um, Man, I didn't think I didn't I know have... I need. I didn't know I needed a film rant that badly, but I have a huge are gap of history. '80s action movies. Yeah, me too. Like, I don't. I haven't seen Predator. I haven't seen Commando. I haven't either. We should watch Commando. Oh, we should. I we have should. it on my Plex server. Yeah, I'm be, I'd be fine with that. Okay. I think I would enjoy that because I've heard Commando is kind of tug in cheek. That's it. You hear it here, everybody. We're watching Commando this weekend. 
at my house. If you can find it, you can watch it with us. <laughs> oh, Jake, I would love if Film YouTube got in here because I am definitely the type of cocky bastard that would take on any person who says my film opinion. And are wrong. Uh, for anyone wondering why we don't have a podcast, check out the stream. <laughs> <laughs> it's just me, just me relentlessly judging other people's taste look for at an this, hour. Look at these people just buried back here. Oh, wow. Does it say anything on their graves? I don't think so. Oh, did they still have the airport in here? Do you remember that? Like, I think near the dwarves, there's like an airport. Oh, yeah. Where you can a... find it. But I think that's more recent. No, I, th I think it's been in here since the beginning. Because I remember around the release, people were talking about it like they found it. Because there's... Uh... Oh, what is it? I can't remember where it is, but it's like weird. It looks like, like a military airfield. Uh, no, it's right next to... Eastern Plagueland? So, it, wherever freaking Iron Forge is. So, Iron Forge is right here, and this is the airport. But you have to load into a different area to get there. So, I always assumed it wasn't part uh, of the original. Jake says Dunmore. Yeah, it was Dunmore. I always forget the name of where. I always just look for Iron Forge. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, boy. Yeah, but. The, there's the whole gnome subplot in uh, uh, Wow Now that has that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow Now. Where I was just killing these. I feel like server quest is really just a quest for us to find a, an MMO that we can play together. I think so too. The uh, Avalon. Avalon. I think comes the out tomorrow. I think the answer is Final Fantasy XIV, though. I don't know. I was trying to look what we have. So we filmed the latest one we just played, which no one watches these, so we can openly talk about it. Uh, the latest one we played was Asheron's Call, which we enjoyed. Actually, at least I enjoyed enough to get out of the tutorial area. Yeah, it felt more polished. It felt like a more polished version of EverQuest. It was very fun. Jake, uh, we're going to play Eve in... Well, at this rate, we probably won't need to record it for another probably another six months i would say yeah i was actually it's on the list there's some interesting ones coming up we're in actually the no wait, wait 2000s eve isn't that far off isn't eve like 2004 uh but we have yeah, a bunch of stuff like between that. now and then i think i was checking um, what the next one was and i can't remember I'm g i gotta look little tease for everybody oh sorry my game disappeared for a second should probably uh, start to wrap this up anyways yeah we should ian you want to do a little outro for me yeah i'll do the outro while will's looking up the mmo list uh we are subpixel we do uh streams every tuesday thursday night at 10 p.m eastern uh on youtube twitch and mixer at subpixel team um we also do uh edited videos uh every wednesday and every uh every other monday or, or mondays when we can mondays are uh, game analysis pieces uh, jake's kind of been spearheading that he does some great investigations into like the history of collectibles in video games and uh world building in horizon zero dawn you know quick game analysis pieces like that i'm writing uh, those one. are going up oh yeah on dwarf fortress right yeah Oh, that was a long time for a bad punchline. I was um, nodding, and I realized you couldn't see me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Jake says next week is Homeworld. So we do those, uh, I would say, most Mondays. We're still kind of nailing down the production schedule on those. But every Wednesday, we do have a, another edited video going up. Uh, this week, it's going to be Server Quest Episode yep. 1, which is actually the second episode. That's our new series where we explore the history of MMOs, just like uh, World of Warcraft, the stream we're doing tonight. We kind of try out MMOs in chronological order. Um, tomorrow is Avalon, I believe, which is very exciting. It's a text-only MMO from the mid-90s, but it looks pretty cool. Wait, mid-90s or late uh, 1989 is when it launched. It's actually really cool. Um, it's just tough it's easy to play it's just it's text only which is a big hurdle i added a lot of funny things so it made the episode enjoyable got it so don't watch this one it's gonna be boring that'll be out tomorrow um uh, also uh, on the opposite wednesdays we do uh scan lines which is our series where we play old games and kind of have fun with them the episode we did last week was captain bible in dome of darkness which was a very weird christian dos game that we played we've got a new episode coming up 
next Wednesday, um, you know what? You're right. Nobody watches the stream. Let's go ahead and tease that as well. We bought a fake NES classic and played it in person. It's pretty crazy. Uh, so wrong. I'm editing that. That'll be up next Wednesday. You can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Subpixel Team. And please, 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 if you enjoyed this stream, give it a like. Give us a subscription. Uh, give us a follow. Whatever it's called. However, any which way you can interact with this, we would greatly appreciate it. Um, it helps us out. kind of promotes our videos within the algorithm. And it also lets us know which content you enjoy. And then we'll focus on creating more content like that in the future. Uh, if you would like to see Will in person as quickly as possible, you can DM him on Twitter at Hunt270. Um, and if you'd like to see weird gunpla and... Uh, tweets about i don't know like weird stuff i do in the garage you can follow me on twitter at think gibson i think that pretty much does it for us will anything else you'd like to add uh no that's about it uh definitely check out the avalon video tomorrow i put a lot of blood sweat and things i can't talk about into it <laughs> oh, um blood. final thoughts on wow classic um it's okay you know if you're into this nostalgia stuff and you have nothing left to do in regular wow play this i wonder if a lot of people are coming back to this and then just like oh man wow nostalgia and then they're just going over to regular wow yeah uh, because be right now i'm thinking hey this human paladin's dope i'm just gonna go make him in regular wow yeah yeah um, um also my yeah. thoughts on wow classic i keep looking at the chat in game and thinking that it's our stream chat and why do to too. respond to it someone yep. just said we'll get you one will yep. get you one tree fitting anyways uh, thank you everyone to, uh, we're not at Tree Fitty anymore. We're up at 416 subscribers. Yeah, it's crazy. They're rocketing. Uh, it's all my new SEO stuff I've been practicing. Uh, I think which it's I have to fix. Uh, real talk. I think it's Bin Laden. <laughs> I think it is Bin Laden. Thank you, Bin Laden. We love you. We got him. Praise be upon him. <laughs> Praise be upon him. Uh, oh my god, <laughs> dude! In that video, your Jesus replied made me laugh so hard. <laughs> Jesus I'm replied. So uh, excuse me. What is the question? <laughs> i'm sorry you were asking me something you want fish uh anyways thank you everyone for joining us i will see you thursday for did we announce what it is um yeah we already talked about it. we're doing arcs final Arc. evolved that will be thursday. there i still have to figure out how to get access to our server we purchased good time contact me uh 8 p.m 10 p.m eastern yeah did you say 10 p i thought you said 8 10 p.m eastern join us okay good Freaking...